Here in Hawaii, the local government is planning a projected one meter in sea level rise by the year 2100. Many of the coastlines in Hawaii are being threatened by sea level rise in three main ways. First, 80% of all Maui beaches are facing coastal erosion, which threatens beaches, buildings, and infrastructure. Erosion can also affect nearshore water quality, causing silt and other particles to damage the reefs. A second impact is high wave damage and flooding during storm and high wave events. The seasonal swells will affect all of Hawaii's coasts and will cause more damage as sea levels continue to rise. Finally, both coastal and inland areas will become vulnerable to flooding, mostly during high tides, resulting in rising groundwater tables and drain system failures. This can also cause saltwater intrusion, threatening our wildlife habitats, agriculture, and our supply of fresh drinking water. Because areas can be impacted by one or all of these impacts, different adaptation strategies are used in different areas to address these impacts. One adaptation strategy, cloud protection physically blocks higher sea levels and keeps the shoreline from moving inland. One example is seawalls, which is a form of coastal defense, which help protect against waves and high tides. Another example of protection, which you see here in front of Sansa Kahana, are sandbags that are used to construct a temporary protective wall or barrier to hold back flood waters. A second adaptation strategy, which is accommodation, where development is modified in place to make it more resilient to sea level rise, such as raising houses on stilts as a protection against flooding. Ecosystem-based adaptation uses the conservation and restoration of natural systems to lessen the impact of sea level rise on shorelines. Here in Maui, a lot of community groups and sea level rise experts are taking the ecosystem-based adaptation approach and protecting our beaches. Like here in Kamaole 1, where local volunteers have been working to promote dune health by planting native species. In the case of dunes, they are used to prevent beaches from eroding away because they act like a sand saves account during times where a lot of sand is being removed due to high wave action. But in some cases, unfortunately, the shoreline is too far gone to be protected or restored. And in those instances, we must retreat or move farther inland. While there aren't any properties actively planning for retreat here in Maui, this is a potential reality facing a lot of developments placed close to Maui's shorelines. Maui County is proposing new shoreline setback rules that would prevent future developments from being placed too close to shorelines, ensure safe relocation of structures in the long run, and to restore natural buffers. When choosing how to adapt to sea level rise, it is important to look at the disadvantages and advantages of these four strategies. For example, protections such as seawalls do help, but only in the short term. While they protect oceanfront buildings, they can eventually create erosion outside of the wall. On the other hand, retreat or permanently moving structures is a long-term solution, but very expensive. While it keeps the community safe, it can force people out of their homes and businesses. Here at Baldwin Beach, the moving of the bathrooms and showers inland is a small example of retreat. However, Baldwin Beach is a place where the community can get involved in adaptation planning and where ecosystem restoration may help to preserve and restore natural buffers. The longest term solutions involve building resilience or building back better. Initially creating infrastructure with climate change in mind can allow for increased savings and safety. It's important to share this knowledge with your ohana and community. Working together as a community is a vital element in building resilience.